St. Louis is a movie town. We've got everything from the huge megaplex theaters that cater to the blockbusters to the smaller houses where you'll find indie films. You'll find me at both. My name is Dawn Meadows Dixon, and I've been covering movies and working as a film critic for nearly 30 years. I've covered the Oscars on the red carpet, movie premieres, interviewed hundreds of stars, and seen thousands of films. And it's my job to bring a bit of Hollywood glitz and glamour to the Gateway City. Welcome to On the Screen. Hello everyone and welcome to On the Screen. I am Dawn Meadows Dixon. My next guest has such hits as Home Alone and Mrs. Doubtfire as well as two of the Harry Potter films. Now producer-director Chris Columbus has a new film called The Young Messiah. Please welcome to the show Chris Columbus. Welcome Chris. Thank you very much. It is so good to talk with you. I saw the film and it, it is the story of Jesus at the age of seven and not much is known about Jesus in the Bible before the age of 12. It's the story of his family's journey from Egypt to Nazareth and at this young age we even see him performing miracles along the way. I'm wondering as a producer why did you want to do this film? Well this was, a f this was based on a book by Anne Rice. Uh, the book was called Christ the Lord and it was a massive bestseller a few years ago and the director of The Young Messiah brought us the book uh, to our production company and he said I think this would make a great story. We read the book and fell in love with it and wanted to make the movie because I had never seen this story before. You know in the scripture in the Bible there, are, there really is no mention, very little mention of Jesus at a young age under 12. So for her to imagine this work of fiction um, where Jesus is actually coming to terms with who he is, not only as a human being, but as a, as, as, as a person who can perform miracles and who is spiritual, I love that because he, he's conflicted. And his parents, who are troubled throughout the film about how they are actually going to approach their child and tell him who he eventually becomes, it's fascinating to me. The Messiah is born. His star has been seen. He will deliver us. You seek your family from Nazareth with a boy named Jesus. To deal with the, with, with the character of Jesus and the integrity of the scripture, we surrounded ourselves with theologians and even someone from the Vatican to come in and guide us throughout the process so there would be no missteps. And as a result, we've been embraced by the, relig uh, the religious community, religious leaders have praised the film. So I feel that we've done our job in that respect as well. You know, as a person of faith, I too was curious about the younger Jesus. And I'm wondering, having done this film, how did this affect your own faith? Well, my faith, you know, my faith is, you know, I grew up, uh, I went to Catholic school for 12 years. So for me, I was in school in the, you know, I was in uh, high school in the 70s and Jesus was literally the coolest guy in, in the world because you remember it's the 70s, late 60s, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar comes out. It's gigantic right. with kids at the time. And here was a guy who was like the rest of us, had long hair. I tried to grow a beard. I couldn't grow a beard back then. But it was like, you know, you, we all emulated that guy because he was cool. And so that always stuck with me. And um, I had always wondered at the time, also being obsessed with film, why there had been so many films, because I'd watch any film, it didn't matter, genre, faith-based, whatever, but I'd watch so many films about the life of Jesus, and they were always so stale and stiff, and Jesus was always played by a blonde-haired, blue-eyed guy, and I was, I was like, when is somebody going to tell the real story of Jesus, the story about this charismatic leader who, who influenced billions of people? Why did God choose me? What if I'm not strong enough? We must trust God. Every day. What do we tell our little boy? How do we explain God to his own son? Well, that's interesting. I'm also a child of the 70s, and I experienced that interest in Jesus in plays and in films. And now we have a new resurgence of an interest in faith-based films with Mark Burnett's uh, The Bible on the History Channel. And I'm wondering what you think is attributed to this. 
Uh, the great stories. You know, I think the bottom line is the Bible is filled with great stories. And I think people are looking for great new original stories. I mean, you know, I can only see Captain America fight Iron Man maybe six more times. But there's a lot of original stories out there. So it'll be interesting to see somebody do more of those types of movies. You know, um, I, I, don't, I didn't get involved with this because it was faith-based. I got involved with this because I love the story. The same reason, there's no real connection to any of the films I've done in the past, whether you're looking at Harry Potter or Home Alone or Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, they, they are, they're all different genres, and this is a different genre as well. What, what connects them all is the stories are great. You know, Chris, you mentioned that you did the classic film Home Alone as well as the Harry Potter films. I'm wondering, looking back, how did that film, Home Alone, change your life? Uh, it only wanted me, you know, it, it gives me a sense of responsibility as a filmmaker. You want to continue to make films. So I try, I really try not to look back. I try to move forward, think about what the next project's going to be, what the next step is, uh, how many more films uh, I can make. I want to help young filmmakers find a way to make their own films. So for me, it didn't, it changed my life um, by only giving me more opportunity. So that's, that's what I'm grateful for. What are you working on next? I'm working on a bunch of stuff. My daughter and I have an, uh, an independent film company. We help young filmmakers find financing for their first films. We've been doing that for th three years. We've been, uh, kind of, I have to say, uh, extraordinarily successful in helping these filmmakers. Three of their films got to the Sundance Film Festival. One was at the Cannes Film Festival last year. Um, so we are really, wa we want to help these young filmmakers. And it also inspires me because these filmmakers uh, have a way of, um, of not caring about money, not caring about anything Hollywood. They just want to make the best film possible. And I get inspired by that. How wonderful to give back to young filmmakers. Thank you so much for being with us here today. Thanks. We've been talking with producer and director Chris Columbus of the new film, The Young Messiah. For On the Screen, I'm John Meadows Dixon. <laughs>
When a young 10-year-old girl contracts a rare disease, her mother, played by Jennifer Gardner, sets out to find a cure. The family witnesses a miracle after her daughter, played by Kylie Rogers, has a freak accident. Everything looks okay. Everything's fine. Everything is not fine. Unlike some faith-based films, this one is well acted. In fact, Jennifer Gardner is fabulous, and the story, while at times a bit over the top, for the most part stays on point. Miracles from Heaven also stars Queen Latifah, who provides great comic relief. This film will tug at your heart. I will admit to shedding a few tears. It's the story of miracles and hope. In fact, the audience at the end cheered, and that doesn't happen very often. This film will not only take you to the movies, it will take you to church. For On the Screen, I'm Don Meadows Dixon.